Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. Now we are continuing to look at the different kings of God's people. And I say God's people like that because God's people are now split, depending on whether they're obeying God or not obeying God. We see that between the different kingdoms, Israel and Judah. And so we're going to continue today looking at a couple different kings. And you'll see through these passages, through uh, First, Ki First Kings 16, and uh, Second Chronicles as well, uh, specifically today, Second Chronicles 17, uh, we'll see that split. So you'll see rulers in Israel, rulers in Judah. Uh, so we'll continue seeing these um, differentiations. Yes, good word. Uh, differentiations between, hey, this is what this group is doing and this is what this group is doing. This is who is leading this group of people and this is who is leading this group of people. And we see these um, simultaneously kind of going up throughout these, uh, throughout these books saying, hey, X years into this ruler's reign from Israel, this is the ruler that was in Judah at the time. So really interesting. Once again, this is what we're going to be looking at. Uh, still more rulers. Jehoshaphat specifically is who we're going to look at. Um, Second Chronicles 17. Uh, so we'll look at that and then uh, we will start in 1 Kings 16. So, 1 Kings chapter 16. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, son of Hanani, against Basha, saying, Inasmuch as I lifted you out of the dust and made you ruler over my people Israel, you have walked in the way of Jeroboam and have made my people Israel sin to provoke me to anger with their sins. Surely I will take away the posterity of Basha and the posterity of his house, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. The dogs shall eat whoever belongs to Basha and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the fields. Now the rest of the acts of Basha, what he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Basha rested with his fathers and was buried in Terzah. Then Allah, his son, reigned in his place. And also the word of the Lord came by the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Basha and his house, because of all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, in provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, in being like those of the house of Jeroboam, and because he killed them. In the twenty-sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, Allah, the son of Basa, became king over Israel, and reigned two years in Terzah. Now his servant, Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him as he was in Terza, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, steward of his house in Terza. And Zimri went in and struck him and killed him in the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. Then it came to pass, when he began to reign, as soon as he was seated on the throne, that he was ki or that he killed all the household of Basha. He did not leave him not leave him one male, neither of his relatives nor of his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the household of Basha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke against Basha by Jehu the prophet, for all the sins of Basha and the sons of Elah his son, by which they had sinned and by which they had made Israel sin, in provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Allah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? In the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri had reigned in Tirzah seven days, and the people were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines. Now the people who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired and has also killed the king. So all Israel made Ormi, Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. Then Omri and all Israel with him went up from Gibbethon, and they besieged Terzah. And it happened when Zimri saw that the city was taken, that he went into the citadel of the king's house and burned the king's house down upon himself with fire and died because of the sins which he had committed in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin which he had committed to make Israel sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and the treason he commit, committed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Gianath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri prevailed over the people who followed, who followed Tibni, the son of Ganath. So Tibni died and Omri reigned. 
In the 31st year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri became king over Israel and reigned 12 years. Six years he reigned in Tirzah, and he bought all the hill of Samaria from Shemur to two talents of silver for two talents of silver. Then he built on the hill and called the name of the city which he built Samaria, after the name of Shemer, owner of the hill. Omri did worse in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all who were before him. For he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin by which he had made Israel sin, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger, anger with their idols. Now, the rest of the acts of Omri, which he did, and the might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? So Omri rested with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. Then Ahab, his son, took his place. In the thirty-eighth year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, became king over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty-two years. Now Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. And it came to pass as though it had been a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took as wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ithbal, king of the Sidonians. And he went in and served Baal and worshipped him. Then he set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Heel of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundations with Abrim, his firstborn, and with his youngest son, Segub, he set up its gates according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken through Joshua, the son of Nun. In Second Chronicles 17. Then Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place and strengthened himself against Israel. And he placed troops in all the fortified cities of Judah and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa, his father, had taken. Now the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the former ways of his father David. He did not seek the Baals, but sought the God of his father and walked in his commandments and not according to the acts of Israel. Therefore, the Lord established the kingdom in his hand and all Judah gave presents to Jehoshaphat and he had riches and honor and abundance and his heart took delight in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he removed the high places and wooden images from Judah. Also, in the third year of his reign, he sent leaders, Ben-Hale, Obadiah, Zechariah, Nathaniel, and Mechahiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. And with them he sent Levites, Shemamiah, Nathaniah, Zebediah, Asheel, Shemerimoth, Jehonathan, Adonijah, Tobijah, Tobadonijah, the Levites, and with them Elishamah and Jehoram, the priests. So they taught in Judah and had the book of the law of the Lord with them. They went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the kingdoms of the lands that were around Judah, so that they did not make war against Jehoshaphat. Also, some of the Philistines brought Jehoshaphat presents and silver as tribute. And the Arabians brought him flocks, 7,000 hundred rams and 700,000 and, and 7,700 male goats. So Jehoshaphat became increasingly powerful, and he built fortresses and storage cities in Judah. He had as much property in the cities of Judah, and the men of war, mighty men of valor, were in Jerusalem. These are their numbers according to their fathers' houses. Of Judah, the captains of thousands, Adna, the captain, and with him 300,000 mighty men of valor. And next to him was Jehonahan, the captain, and with him 280,000. And next to him was Amamasiah, the son of Zikri, who willingly offered himself to the Lord. And with him, 200,000 mighty men of valor. Of Benjamin, Elida, the mighty men of valor, and with him, 200,000 men armed with a bow and shield. And next to him was Jehozabad, and with him, 180,000 prepared for war. These served the king besides those the king put in fortified cities throughout all Judah. So, again, we see these parallel accounts just kind of, um, I guess, just building, right? Um, and we're going to continue to see that. What does that balance look like? Where does Israel and Judah um, 
I don't know, clash, where do they, where do they meet and kind of seeing their journeys together. Um, I think as I was reading this, I, I continue to be struck with those that, and we'll continue to see this with uh, Jehoshaphat, those that uh, follow the Lord and those that seek to honor him uh, with what they have. God, God chooses to honor and chooses to bless that. Um, and we see that. We see their their lives are generally, um, that's just, I, that's the best way to say it, maybe. Their lives are just better. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have easy lives, right? I mean, when you look at the lives of the disciples, um, all of them just had brutal deaths, um, just really, really tough situations there, and yet they didn't swerve. So I think when I when I read this, I get so tempted to say, oh, yeah, you know, like, when you worship God, it's going to go well for you. And it will, but it may not be in this life. Um, you will be blessed. The Bible says that. But you may not be blessed in this life. Um, but either way, that's, again, if you're storing up treasures in heaven, they're not decaying due to dust or rust or whatever. So, um, yeah, that's just what I was struck with. I was like, it's really cool that um, God is honoring his leaders here because they are the ones that are leading his people. I mean, truly God is, but, um, people tend to look for a human figure. So anyway, that's, uh, what I was struck with today. I thought it was pretty cool to see that. Um, yeah. And as always, friends, thanks so much for joining. Have a great rest of your day.